Hi, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with some more of the mapping textures in Octane for Cinema 4D. Specifically, we'll be looking at clamp, color, cosine mix, gradient, invert, mix, multiply, add, subtract, and compare. We already discussed triplanar and UV transform in a previous video, so we'll just focus on these guys. And for this video, I'm using the Machinery 01.C4D scene. So let's start by creating an Octane material. And I'm going to set its type in the basic settings to glossy. And then I want to select this panel right here, which is panel 17. And I'm going to apply that material to panel 17 so we see nice white glossy material. So let's start with the mix texture. That's pretty easy. And we've used it before in a couple other videos. But let's just do a quick review. So here's the mix texture. I'm going to create a couple RGB spectrum textures. Let's rename these. I'll name this one green. And I'll rename this one red. And let's plug green into texture one, red into texture two. And we'll plug this into diffuse. And let's do a quick re-render. Of course, now we have to set the actual colors to green and red. So let's select the green texture and I'm gonna set this to green. And let's select the red texture and I'll set this to red. That always helps. Of course, the result is yellow because red plus green in computer graphics makes yellow. So if we go to the mix texture and I select the amount slider, if I go all the way to one side, we get green. If I go all the way to the other side, we get red. Everything in between mixes the two together. So we get from kind of a deep orange to a greenish yellow. Now, of course, you can also plug textures into the mix texture. So let's bring in an image texture. And I'm going to set the type here to float. So it's going to be a grayscale texture. And in the texture browser, I'm going to find the panel 06 bump PNG texture that's included with the project files. The grayscale texture, let's copy it to the project and use it as the input for the amount. So as you can see, since our texture is grayscale, the lighter colors are gonna be more red and the darker colors are gonna be more green. Now, if we take a look at the cosine mix, it's very similar. In fact, I'm going to plug green into texture one and red into texture two and the same image texture into the amount. Let's plug this into the diffuse for a glossy material. And you see it gets, it's a very subtle difference, but the greens are, and the reds are a bit more vibrant. And the reason is, is because the cosine mix is using a different algorithm for mixing the two textures than just the mix texture. Mix texture uses a linear amount. Cosine mix uses a cosine. So that means that uh, the colors of the input texture that are more closer to the extremes of dark and light are gonna have more of a intense green or red value depending on how they're plugged in uh, because it's a cosine wave as opposed to a straight up linear mix. So it's a subtle distinction, but that is the difference. So next, let's take a look at the gradient texture. So I'm bringing a gradient texture and let's move, let's get rid of these mix textures and plug the gradient into the diffuse input. It's gonna come out white. But if we look in the options, we can see that we have this ramp here. It's from black to white. The reason we're seeing all white here is we need to create an input so that Octane knows how to map the gradient to the surface. So a good uh, example to use would be the fall off. So I'll create a fall off texture and I'll put this into the input texture for gradient. It turns mostly black except along the edges. As I rotate the view, you can see it becomes lighter in color. And this is because the gradient is now being mapped to the surface based on that input fall off texture. Fall off is set to normal versus iray, meaning the glancing parts of the surface that are facing away from the camera, are gonna get more of the uh, light color, for this end of the ramp, and the parts of the surface that are more facing towards the camera or perpendicular to the camera 
I'm going to get more of this dark color. Of course, we can click on this and change these colors. So I'll use value saturation hue to make this red. And then we'll make this one green. We have the value, we're going to saturation green color. OK, there we go. And as you can see, as I move off to the side here, we get more of that. On the glancing angle, we get more of the blending there of the red and the green, producing that yellow color. And as we go head on, we get more of the red color. So let's take a look at the clamp texture. I'm going to get rid of the gradient here and the fall off. Let's take that image texture, put it to the input of clamp, and then put the output of clamp into diffuse. You can see there is our familiar texture again with the grayscale values. The clamp texture will basically allow you to adjust the minimum and maximum values. So the minimum being the dark colors, maximum being the light colors. So if I bring this up, we're going to bring up the lowest level of the dark colors so that they don't go below 0.258. And if I bring down max, then they won't go above 4.1. So it's just basically limiting the range of colors of that input texture. And let's take a look at the add texture and multiply and subtract. So we'll compare these three. So these work a lot like blending modes in uh, Photoshop. So if you're using layers in Photoshop, you said the blending mode, these are kind of the similar algorithm. Um, so let's take a look at add. So I'm going to put the image texture and input. I'm going to connect the image texture to texture one of add. Let's create a um, RGB spectrum texture. We'll set this to blue. Put this into texture two and then plug this into the diffuse. So basically what's happening is the blue color is being added to this texture, to the values of this texture, so that the darker textures are getting more of that blue. The lighter colors are still remaining light or white, but uh, it's just basically being added together. So blue is being added to the values of this texture, producing kind of this bluish tinting. Now if we take a look at multiply, plug this into texture one, that same blue into texture two, and put this into diffuse. Now the values of the texture are being multiplied against blue, and the result is that the darker colors are getting its deep blue color, and the lighter shades are getting kind of this moderate medium blue there. Again, very much like the multiply mode in Photoshop or any compositing program. So let's try a subtract. We'll put this into texture one to subtract, put that blue color into texture two, and plug the result into diffuse. And this time we're getting kind of the complementary color to these blue colors is the result right here, as the uh, values of this texture are being subtracted by that blue color. Now let's take a look at color correction. So what I'm going to do is let's bring add back to diffuse. And let's get rid of these two textures. We don't need them anymore. I'll create a color correction node. And this works a lot like uh, any color correction node in compositing programs. So I'm going to plug the result of the add texture into texture one and plug the output into diffuse. Select the color correction node. We can see that we have attributes such as brightness. We can invert. We can adjust the hue, saturation, gamma, and contrast. So a color correction node like you might find in Nuke or other compositing programs. Uh, very useful, of course. Uh, the invert is not super exciting. It allows you to invert the texture. So if I put the result of the add texture into the invert node and then plug this into diffuse, it inverts the colors. Note that the color correction node also has an invert, and many of the other nodes 
have kind of a built-in invert. Even the original image texture, I can invert that. So, um, so that's uh, that's basically invert. Pretty straightforward. Let's get rid of it here and let's put this back into diffuse and go to our add node, color correction. Let's bring down the brightness to something more reasonable. And finally, let's take a look at the compare texture. So I'll bring this in here. Let's get rid of add and color correction. And I'm going to connect our image texture. Let's turn off that invert to input A. If you take a look at the settings for the comparison texture, we have our input A's, which I've had that grayscale image. And then we have input B, and then these are the comparisons which control the output. So let's connect this to diffuse. And I'm going to take my RGB spectrum and I'm actually going to connect this to if A is less than B. Let's create another RGB spectrum. Let's make this red and connect this to if A is greater than or equal to B. So now we can see we're getting this blue and red texture and if we take a look here, let's we need to make we need to make one more connection. Let's create just a simple float and use that as the input for B. And if I start to adjust this value, you can see the colors change on my surface. Basically what's going on is the comparison is taking a look at the values of my image texture and comparing it against the value of this float whatever this value is right here. And then it's outputting the results based on the input textures and the comparison operation. So if A is less than B, then make the color blue. If A is greater than or equal to B, then make the color red. So that's pretty straightforward. It gives you some nice powerful textures for adjusting uh, existing images, whether they're you know image textures or procedural textures. Uh, so it's a great way to edit the textures that are applied to your surfaces.